Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. In this video, we'll be writing code for a serial monitor for MSP430 Launchpad. In the first example, we'll display a simple sentence on the terminal and we'll also give information about pointers in C programming language. And in the second example, we'll display the temperature and humidity values that are read from a DHT11 sensor. So let's go ahead, open Code Composer Studio and start writing our code. In this example, we are going to write some text on the serial output. Let's analyze the code. In the first line, we are including the MSP430 header file. Actually, it's automatically added by the Code Composer Studio. Then we define a character array named text and it includes the sentence, I am an MSP430. Then we define the serial output function as void, meaning that it will not return a value and it gets the pointer character str as argument. We will discuss very quickly about pointers and their usage in our function. In our main function, the first line disables the watchdog timer. The following two lines are for setting the basic clock control register and setting the operating frequency to 1 MHz. P1 cell and P1 cell 2 registers first and second bits are set in order to set the P1.1 and P1.2 ports as digital communication ports. The following block of code is for USCI, Universal Serial Communication Interface Module. First line resets the module and sets the clock. The following three lines are for setting the baud rate as 19,200. And the last line is for setting the module again. In the while one loop, which is an infinite loop, we are calling the serial output function with the text argument, which was defined as a global variable in the beginning of our code. Now let's see the serial output function. I've created a for loop that is going to run the content of the function five times, just for demo purposes. Later on, we are going to update it. In this line, we are making sure that the interrupt flags are not set in order to transmit properly. These interrupt flags are set when transmission is in place. Before we describe the single line of code that is doing the transmission, let's see a small example about pointers. Pointers are important aspects in C++ programming since they give quick access to memory addresses and their content. In this short code, first we are defining an int array named A, which has five integers starting from one and we get five. Then we define a pointer, which is done by putting an asterisk at the beginning named pnt underscore A. In the main function with this line of code, we assign the memory address of integer array A to the pointer. The declaration asterisk pnt underscore a means the content of the memory address. So in this line, we update the memory slot that the pnt underscore a is referring to with the integer value 2021. Then in the following line, we increase the value of the pointer itself, not the content by three. And right after that, we update the content of that memory address with zero. And in the last line, we reset the pointer address to the array's address once again. Let's see how the code runs and let's observe each step. Now let's debug the code. And instead of clicking resume, let's click step into to see in each step what the output will be. In this step, we've assigned the integer array A's address to pnt underscore A pointer. So you can see that pnt underscore A sees the memory address of the integer array A. Let's have one more step. Now, by executing this step, we've changed the content of the integer array a and the first element of the integer array is now 2021 let's see what happens in the next step you can see that the pointer's address has changed to 206 instead of 200 we had indicated in the code to increase the pointer's address by three however we don't see 203 but we see 206 this is because each integer uses two bytes, 16 bits. So that's why if we increase the pointer by three, the address is going to increase by six. This can change in other variables like characters, long integers, and etc. 
and it has changed the content of that address to zero. You can see that the fourth element is now zero. If we click on step into once again, we are going to see that the pointer's address is again hexadecimal 200, which is pointing to the first element of our array. I hope that this part has been useful for understanding the pointers. Now let's go back to our original code. Now that we have a better understanding of the pointers, let's see what our serial output function does. When we pass a character array to the function, it's going to get its memory address since the argument is defined as character asterisk str. And when we execute this line of code, the content of that address is going to be pushed to the transmit buffer and it will be increased by one with the plus plus increment. So this means that with this code, we will be expecting to see the first five elements of the text array that we are passing. Let's run our code and see how it works. In the code, I had forgotten to define the integer i that we are using in the for loop. So I included it here. Now we can debug the code. Okay, in the expressions window, you see that the str is not found. However, as we execute the code, we will see its content. Before running the code, we need to make sure that our terminal is set up correctly. If you don't see the terminal window, as we see on this screen now, I will show you how to access that. We are going to click on view and we are going to choose terminal. Once you choose the terminal, you can click on this icon and change its settings. Remember that we had defined the baud rate as 19,200 in our code, so this is okay. And if you want to make sure which serial port you need to use, you can use the control panel and device manager and click on ports. You see that MSP application UART1 is set to COM3, so our setting is correct. click on OK and let's continue by stepping into the code. Now we are going to call the serial output function. You can see that now in the str expression we see a value. At the memory address hexadecimal 200 it shows our character array starting with I am an MSP 430, continuing like that. Let's see what happens as we run the code step by step. In the first cycle, you see that we have the I at the output of the terminal. And the memory address of our STR pointer is now 201 in hexadecimal. Remember from our previous example that we were describing pointers you can recall that when we increase the pointer's value by 1, it was increasing by 2 because it was containing integer. However, our content is now characters and they occupy 8 bits corresponding to 1 byte. So with each increment, our value is going to be incremented by 1 as well. So let's keep on clicking the step into. Now we have the space here. Let's continue. A. And you can see that memory address is increasing as well. And we are seeing the rest of the sentence. Let's continue clicking on step into. Let's do it quickly. And then we stop after five elements. So this gives the output as i space m space a. So now let's change our code to see the whole sentence. Instead of having five cycles, let's continue till the end of the character array. We can do it with the following loop. Let's say while. The content of the str is not 
equal to zero. Perform the following loop. So we can expect to see the whole sentence after this modification. Let's debug and run the code once again. Let's clear the content of this terminal by right clicking and clicking on clear terminal. And now instead of clicking step into several times, let's click on resume. You can see that we are constantly having the output. Let me maximize this window. And as you can see, the output is not as we are expecting, right? I mean. We are not having a nice output here. So let's change the code a bit. Let's add a carriage return and a new line after our sentence. Let's save it. Let's debug it. Clear our terminal window, maximize it, and click on resume. I would like to remind one thing here. We are communicating with our MSP430 launchpad via the USB cable. This means that we are not using the P1.1 and P1.2 ports. You need to set the jumpers on the launchpad as you can see in this picture. And in the second example, we are going to be reading the temperature and humidity values from a DHT11 sensor, and we are going to be printing that output on the terminal. Let's first debug our code. Let's open the terminal window. and make sure the settings are okay. And let's click on resume. You can see that we are getting the temperature and humidity values, saying that the temperature is 30 degrees, humidity is 40%. And it continues in a loop. Since it's too hot, I'm going to try to put some ice cube on it. You can see that the temperature has started decreasing. So this was the end of the video. I hope it's been useful for you. If you have any questions about the video, please use the comments. And if you like the video, please click on like and consider subscribing to the channel for new videos. Thank you for watching. Bye.